Last week I spent what I would consider to be an insane amount of money on this motorcycle. I just bought a $100,000 motorcycle. Let's get out of here before I have to buy something else. Now that buyer's remorse and reality has kicked in, I need to find out if I got scammed or not. Is this bike worth way less than what I paid for it? Or did I score huge and this thing is worth significantly more? Thank you for Shopify for sponsoring this video. More on that in a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to Get this thing authenticated with the only guy who I ever let authentic. He's, he's the number one guy, Matt from Wheels of Time. Now, I told him about this bike. He saw pictures of this motorcycle, but he's never seen it. Hi, buddy. What's up, man? All right. How you Made doing? It. Everything good? Everything's good, man. I got the bike. I want to show it to you and just maybe I screwed up. Let's take a look. Maybe I screwed up. I don't know. So uh, from the pictures, it looked pretty nice, man, but we'll see in person. So I showed the bike to Matt and I was pretty proud of my new purchase, but depending on what Matt says, that might affect it. The valuation process today will be based on three things. One, how original and 1937 this bike really is. Because if it's all a bunch of repop parts or mismatched parts from different bikes, then I made a really big mistake. Two, if the engine is still good and runs, that's very important, it's gotta run, because replacing this motor will cost me a small fortune. And three, if this paint is original, then this bike will be worth double what I paid for it. And I brought a really cool tool that Matt's never seen before to help us figure that out. Now you told me over the phone, if it's original, this could be a $200,000 bike. It could. We're gonna have to look closer we'll at it. We're gonna look a little closer at it. But I wanna get, the, let's, I'm concerned about whether it runs or not. Okay. Right, I mean, because if it doesn't run, what's, what's it, what, what could it cost to get it run? Worst case scenario, you'd be into it about half of another bike. <laughs> We're going to hope it, it runs as nice as it is complete. We'll yeah, okay, it. okay. Let's roll it inside, man. <whistles> man, that's nice. When I'm looking at a bike like this, and a 37 is like one-year-only stuff. It's a, the, the, almost all of the bike is used for just a couple years, you know. The, okay. the speedometer is a year only. The engine cases are specific to their type, the oil tank, the frame. So when we start looking this thing over and diving in and really looking over the parts, we'll know how authentic and accurate it actually now, is. 37 is not necessarily the most valuable year of the knuckle. It's first and last year, right? It's, no, it's, it's 37 is one of the most. They only oh, made really? 1,900 and something bikes. Wow. Yeah, so they did not make a lot of bikes. 36 is kind of the top of the, the collector food chain there. 36, they made about 1,600. It's the first year. 37, second year for the knuckle. And it's, you know, they were still growing through a lot of those teething issues and growing pains, developing a new model. And what's really cool about it is where, you know, things got changed because they might not be up to snuff as far as the a, a production model goes so as you go 36 37 38 they refine these bikes and the bikes get better but what that actually means is that the parts from 37 that are 37 when they got replaced guys didn't keep them so they got tossed so the fact that if this bike is all 37 oh. stuff it makes it that much better first thing i'm looking at is it's got the original step hubs on it Okay, so a st they're all star hubs, mm -hmm. and a step hub you see has this little step right in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so they went in 1940 to a stronger star hub. They got rid of that step, mm -hmm. but those are the valuable wheels. Okay. So first good sign. I mean, how many of these got wrecked in the first couple of years? It's no telling. You know, Half of them. Like, this was a, this was a fast bike at that time, right? This was a really fast bike. Spaceship, 100 mile an hour motorcycle right off the line. That's crazy. And these dudes—they're not wearing helmets. No. No, it's a le little leather helmet, roads that weren't made for the speeds. I mean, it's it. you can find yourself in a lot of trouble with an inch and a half of suspension in the front and right, in the back. Yeah. Right. That being said, it's probably one of the best motorcycles of any point through history to ride. Really? Once you get on a bike like this, you won't want to get anything else. Wow. Then Matt noticed that the insides of the tanks have been sealed, which lets us know that the bike has not been sitting for the past 70 years, which is a good sign. And it's got modern day Coger tires on it to replace the original tires. So what that means is someone was planning to ride the bike, all of which is good news. You think that's real? Yeah, that's real. Yeah, 18,000 miles? That's real nice is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, so 37. 120 mile an hour. Can it do that? We're gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> this whole dash oh, okay. cluster, so you paid what for this bike? 
I paid about $90,000. $90,000 for this bike. For some perspective, this dash cluster here is worth $90,000. It's probably worth 10% of that. <laughs> Just the dash cluster. Crazy. Yeah, so, and that's because they're one year only components, two years on the gauges there, and it's original stuff. Wow. Very rare, very hard stuff to find. Just this little knob here. That's a, a speedometer light. Rare. Rare. Oh, this is the on and offer? That's on and it. off? That's the on and off light. There's a clear spot on the back of the Speedo there. So oh, really? Whether it works or not, we'll find out. But that so cool. it's supposed to light your Speedo. That doesn't. And in here, I should see like the on off thing. That's, an, that's an oil pressure gauge, right? Or oil pressure switch there that tells you if it's on or off. And uh, it's in there. But it would, you keep, like would, you, would you keep that cracked? I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah, because it's so cool. I would, yeah, it's just, it's probably the original stuff in there. And yeah, not something you want to mess with. Second perspective, just a pair of these gas tanks. Yeah, 36 to 39 Harley Davidson knucklehead gas tanks. Almost worth what that dash is worth. Wow. So th this right here, what I'm holding in my hand is a quarter. Yeah, not a quarter, but you call yeah. it 15%. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 15% of the bike. That's not bad. These, these are... Those are these reproduced. Are, these are new. Now on my 37 over here, this is a 37 Big Twin Flatty. This is an original cap. Trajan. No. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one like that was sitting over there that you were like, don't touch that? Yeah, yeah that's that's a nice one. So he's talking about the... the, the uh, that's a, the air breather. The air, air box cover. So... Th th Two and a half, three years only. This one, oh my God, it's a real 37 one. See, with screws there. See, it's got yeah, screws yeah, yeah. instead of slot. Uh, yeah, oh, so, so rare. So even the missing the tag on top, and that's okay. So it's, it's, it's irrelevant that it's rusted. It's just the fact that it, it exists. A lot of guys would prefer it in that condition. Because, because their bikes, it matches the bike. Matches the Their bike looks bike. like this because... It, Unless you never rode it, you know what I mean. It, this is this is what bikes look like after eighty right. something years. That's right, ninety years, whatever. How many years that is? Like I said, there's so much one year only stuff on this. Looking at it, this has a thirty seven only frame. Okay, right. which you identify the frames by a few different things. Firstly, there's oh, so th these actually had numbers on the frame. Yeah, that's right. It's not the same number as the VIN number, but what you got here is you've got this hallmark here, and that's a number. You can see a number two right there. So this is a number two thirty-seven frame. Okay. It's got, it's a brazed frame, so it's not welded at the joints. Okay. All the joints are brazed here. This is like thirty away from our raffle bike. Oh really? No. Yeah, yeah it is. Thirty-seven hundred, thirty-seven EL nineteen seventeen. They, know, they 19, know each 17. other. They would know each they other. They know each other. Yeah, these high school. These are <laughs> they're, friend, they're friends from work. <laughs> <laughs> Buddies from work, man. What is yeah. what is the number? So 37 EL 1917. I think ours is 1950. And hey, so you said you said how many were made? They made 1900 and 25 of them. That being said, the VIN number starts at 1001. Oh, okay. So this is number 917. Got it, got it. It's got the it. 917th off the line, but okay. the VIN number is 1917. Okay. So, uh, yeah, beautiful 1937 cases, beautiful VIN number, and that's so much of the value in a motorcycle like this is an unaltered VIN number. Um, you know, any number of reasons why a VIN number might be altered or changed over the years, it doesn't always mean it's stolen. You know, sometimes a guy will blow up his engine, take it to the, the Harley-Davidson dealer. The Harley-Davidson dealer had sets of cases on the wall ready to go and build into somebody's new motor so they, you right. know, can replace their blow-up cases. And they were, and they were blanks. They were blanks, and they stamped the same VIN number in there so you don't have to go get your bike re-registered right. and retitled and all of that. So 36. Seven ish four fin cylinders. So this is one, two, three, four fins. You know, you right gas tanks with 36 to 9 petcocks. You got that early proper uh, primary cover that's a, what we call a narrow primary. The clutch pedals, the right clutch pedal, the clutch pedal covers right. You got the right floorboards. Later police kickstand. Oh, it's a police kickstand. That's a police kickstand with that little hook on there, okay. which a lot of guys did because it's handy. Yeah. You know, you get that, they put that on there so you can get to it with your foot real easy. Yeah, right. So that's no big deal. Right shifter, period accessory, very cool. Oh, this is like a period of like aftermarket, like that's what the guys were all doing. That's what the guys were doing, man. 37 only oil tank, 37 chain guard, later saddlebags, which are still very cool. Maybe like Buco made, period. 
Now, what, what's with, what, yeah, what's with those little, these stones? These, the jewels? Yeah. Oh, man, those are cool. Those are called glow brights, man, and that's just, like, real cool period accessory are stuff, man. No. no, they're just little reflectors, and guys that run them on their license plates, they use them as saddlebag mounts. Cool stuff, man. You know, I, I love those. You're missing two of them. We'll have to see if I got any. Now, if I, I never looked inside here. Is there anything in here? if there's money. <laughs> also, what? Uh, this is a toolbox? Let me get some of that money back. Yeah, that's a, uh, another part. This toolbox is like this. Really? Or like this. Really? Yeah, so another one of those parts that guys look their whole life to find a toolbox like that for yeah. their bike. How do we get into it? That's a good one. How well, do we get into is it, it? Is it possible it's full of you tools? You got a toolbox key? Steve's got a toolbox. Man, you guys. We'll see what's in there. Now, if, if, it's, if it's got tools in it. I get to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's in here? Ooh. Oh, my Bucky sandwich. You want to split it? Yeah. <laughs> How long has that been in there? Is that from Bucky's? Yeah, dude. 100 miles. Dude, they're the best. Bucky. Yeah, no, it was the first Bucky's, the one like 200 miles ago. <laughs> the Crossville Bucky's. Yeah, it's still, oh, it's still yeah, good yeah. though. These are good for like days. Those are good for days. I'll sit around and eat that later. So what tools would have been in there? Basically stuff to be able to service your bike on the road. You know, you're not doing it, no, not enough tools in there to do any major engine overhaul or anything like that, but you could change a flat, change your plugs adjust your rear chain. And then I asked Matt the big question. Did I make a horrible mistake buying this motorcycle? $85,000, $90,000 is a lot of money to spend on anything. Looking at the bike now, I don't think it was a bad investment. And if whether it runs or not will be the, the determinant on right. just how good of investment it was. Okay. Because the way I always look at it, the bikes are valuable. They could be worth any range on any given day, right. but they're also useful. And the fun and has to cost you something. 37 only fork, rare, tough to find. See these grease fittings right yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way on the inside. The later forks, the grease fittings were on the outside. So, so and, yeah, them. and this is a, ooh, that's an early 37 fork. Oh, it's a mid range 37 fork, too. So these are probably the forks. That blow on this bike. With that frame and that fork and that VIN number, everything seems to line up real good. So either whoever put this thing together did an amazing job sourcing out the parts and went way out of their way past what anyone would, most, what the average person would ever realize, or this is a really, really original bike. Yeah, I don't think at all that it's a put-together motorcycle. Every sign from our first glance at this is that this has always been a bike. Yeah. Whether that's paint is original or not is the you question. Yet to be determined. Well, cool, man. So let's get this thing on the lift, see if we can compression, spark, fuel. Specifically, I think Dave Ort built this bike for John Parham. Do you know who Dave Ort is? No. Dave Ort, he one of, was one of Mike Wolf's buddies on Pickers. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, Dave's been in the antique bike world for a long time. He, I think he restored that, did that 39 that you had in your video, the red and black one. Yeah. That was a similar bike to this. Okay, yeah. They are giving away another a fully restored 37 knucklehead. It's beautiful. Bob Dow fenders and stuff like that. Where do they go to buy that, that giveaway? Wheelsthroughtime.com forward slash win this bike. I'll put the link in the, in the description. They do one every year. It's one of the, it's a beautiful bike. We just look, actually, we'll just show a video, we'll show a clip of it. The raffle is one of the things that keeps the museum up and running, man. We wouldn't be able to keep the lights on and wouldn't be able to build new displays without uh, support that we get through the well, and, and you, one person a year is getting a motorcycle that they would never in their lifetime ever got to own. Piece of history, man. That's amazing. So in the category of, is this thing a real 37? This is a very, very, third 1937 Harley Davidson knucklehead. It's very authentic. But the big question is, does it work? Does the engine actually fire up and work? Because if it doesn't, I'm in a lot of trouble. It's looking good. But if the engine does, if we have a catastrophic engine failure, this is possible, uh, this might, this may not have been a great deal for me. It kicks over good, but it kind of feels a little tight. So I'm hoping that's not an indication of any major issues. It could just be that it doesn't have a lot of oil in it. Right. Any signs uh, from what you're seeing that this might be a hopped up? We're going to know the minute we start it. Okay. Those pipes, those were the hot rod pipes. So those are called MCM or Atlas twin stacks. Okay. And those were the bad pipes. In terms of bikes like this, performance parts are value. Because uh, when, I, when I put performance parts on my mom's minivan, it dropped the value. <laughs> <laughs> Resale. <laughs> Boom. That's a wash because 
that those particular parts, the original fishtail muffler on that is like because they're they they've all been messed up and thrown away. Messed up, and, thrown and away, rotted out. Yeah. You know, it's just really thin sheet metal. It was the first thing to get banged up, right? Or, or first thing to rust. I still got some of those bikes and beard straps there. Maybe I should use those. Yeah, use those. So it's not really a battery box. It's kind of the oil box is the same thing. That's right. That's a genius innovation by William S. Harley. Man, is the horseshoe oil tank slash battery because it won't rust it's covered it's filled with oil it's filled with oil and it's just uh perfect use of space yeah you know you think about oh uh, yeah these are these both gas tanks yeah those are both gas oh okay right so you're you're 45 you got oil on one side gas on the other yeah the the name for this bike was the 61 ohv or the model el and over the years they just got nickname knuckleheads and that's because of your you know you got the peak here and the peak here and the peak there and there and that's yeah. where the name knucklehead came that's from right off right there yeah right on that side of the engine and did, did they have they did they have just one knuckle size there they have two knuckle Ooh, that's, a good sign. that's a good sign how many different size uh engine two, knuckles uh, two sizes so this 61 thousand cc's they, 74. they had a 74 1200 cc okay. and they started the 74 and 41 so the one over on the bench over there that's a first year model fl and that's even faster i don't know that the top speed was faster these bikes like to wind up okay. they really like to wind up um let's take a look at our points see if we got spark at the points Come on off of there. Even this is a 37 part. How do you know it? Because the nipples is real big. You see the difference? Oh, yeah. Between that, that's real subtle, and this one's real pronounced. Yeah. That one actually might be an early one, too. So what's a bad sign if it's all covered in rust? Co yeah, rust and corrosion. Ooh, that's Ooh. nice. Original points. Original points. I hear it, do you? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna spin that, see where the points gaps at. Looks looks about right. That's supposed to be twenty two thousandths of an inch at the farthest part. Yeah, you see where the points open up there. I was thinking they were supposed to be twenty two thousandths of an inch. I was I was telling I was telling Chris that. <laughs> it's okay. Thirty seven only oil pump. Nice. That's this little guy right here. Yep. Uh, correct. M five. Linkert carburetor. That's a rare carburetor. What's that worth? I don't know, fifteen hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This has been updated. Most of them were mm -hmm. later, and should only have one post there. Um, okay. Check the oil tank, man. So if the oil light comes on, I have no oil. No oil. Is that a good thing or a bad thing of how they stored it? Ah, uh, you know what, man? I leave oil in my bikes. Yep. Yeah clean okay so there may be a bunch of oil in the lower end Little bite yeah i do i've Love never that. had bucky's barbecue before oh it's good man that's a brisket sandwich dang that's not bad you don't even need a funnel no nah, funnels are for posers wow you can tell this guy's got a lot of kids <laughs> I'm trying not to spill this, man. <laughs> Let's go with another one. Okay. He's the best. That's good. That's good enough for now. That's good enough to run it. We'll check transmission oil. We want to bleed. We want to prime the uh, prime the oil system. Uh, yeah. We'll go ahead and uh, pop that. Uh, what's that? An eleven sixteenth, right, Sean? That looks like an eleven sixteenth. Yeah. See, this is later. So okay. normally your oil pressure switch on a 37 is up here, or not oil, brake light switch. Common update, these were clunky. There we go. Oh yeah, did we have it on the lift the whole time, but on the ground? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That's my... There's a little bit of something in there. Yeah? Enough. Nah, you get it. see if you can bring it up uh, a little bit. Right. Um, I made a big mess. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even make it to the funnel. <laughs> the shop was spotless until I got here. Can't take you anywhere, sure. <laughs> man, those are nice original parts, man. That is way cool. 
Way cool. Okay, these parts are staying here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some gas in this thing. We're going to hope that the carburetor doesn't need rebuilt. The tanks were drained. Okay. So that makes me hope that the carburetor was drained too. If it wasn't, we'll pull it off real quick. And this is not original probably. That's uh, new, yeah. So that's new wire, wire mesh there. But it all looks pretty good inside the carb. And let's lower this sucker down, man, and let's see if we it. can fire let's it up. See if it fires up. I can't wait. Those pipes are gonna sound so good. Yeah. Oh, those pipes are gonna sound so good. I'm pumped. You nervous? A little bit. A little bit. Bargain or bust. This is more, I paid more for this than I paid for my first house. Really? Yeah. I'm just realizing that right now. My family could live inside that house, not on top of the spike. <laughs> Moment of truth. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh, the carb's leaking. Ow. Ow. That happens. Float bowl stuck. Yeah, float bowl stuck. Happen, being, happens a lot. Just from being empty. Just from being empty. Yeah. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Don't freak out, everybody. Chris, keep it cool. <laughs> keep it cool, dude. All right. This is normal. That's normal stuff. I should have thought about it right off the bat. Okay. Somehow I blame Craig. Here we go. You're going to tell me if I got fuel in the throat there after about three kicks. We ought to. Yep. Ooh, I heard it. Yep. yep. Saw it. Got it? One kick. Here it is. One kick. One kick. think sold it's all there it sounds because last time we fired up the wldr i was like it sounds awesome and then you were like we can make it better and well we can make it better i think the timing's a little bit needs a little more advance okay so it's a little retarded yeah if i kick it here and it doesn't want to yeah it's it's a little retarded whoa we'll do it by ear let me uh get a screwdriver and then we'll Advance it real quick. You know, you can hear it by ear. When you wick it, it ought to like carry the revs. Okay. So like, wham, wham, and this one here, when you wick it, it comes up, comes right back down. Okay. If you can probably kind of hear it. Now is that because it was tuned improperly at the wrong time or because it sat? How could that have changed by sitting? You know what? Uh, it wouldn't have changed by sitting. Right. There's a range of acceptability. Mm. Uh, Your range of acceptability is a little more narrow. We like to ride them. I want like to I want to ride it and I want to ride it like it was made to be ridden. This is right. a performance machine. You ought to be able to get down the road on the highway with this. You ought to be able to blow by guys that are going too slow. Yeah. Cuz you're, you know, you are pulling on them in your 90 yeah, you'll, you'll 5-year-old motorcycle. So it's confirmed that the bike runs and it sounds awesome. Matt did spend a couple minutes tuning it and making sure that the timing is perfect. But now we have to figure out whether this is a $200,000 bike or it's a $100,000 bike. And the difference is whether that's original paint. Now, I was told by a guy that when Harley painted it, original Harley paint's very thin and it's also very inconsistent, but it's always thin. So I do have a paint depth gauge that we can test and then go find a, test like a newer, a, something, that, something that you know has been painted and then test some old, some old. I've got see. an original paint 37 tank. Do you? Hanging on the wall. Let me, go grab my, let me go grab my paint depth gauge. Just to show you guys how this works, um, 5.8, 4.6, 3.4, 3.7. These are all normal numbers that you're gonna see somewhere in the like three to five. It also depends on make and model of the vehicle, but there's, there's a consistency to it. 3.6, 3.7. So you would use this to, to see if the car has ever been painted. And then you get to this panel. 9.8, 8.3. 
there's no paint work on this whole truck except for this panel the paint is almost double the thickness so it, you know it got sanded it got repainted or got painted by everything else was painted at the same time by a machine this was painted by a man they throw on more paint. That's how you know. So at some point in time, this was, an, this, was, this, was a, this was an accident. Now we can tell the same thing from what we know about Harley Davidson stuff. So what do we got? What is it? So that little thing pushes down, just a little nothing. And then it tells me, so like I can, my truck, my one panel was painted. It was like, it was like 9.4 or something. Okay. Like the a car is gonna be normal between like three and six. When you see double of everything else, you know something's been painted. So we can look. Yeah, let's look, look at this new paint. Okay, so this is brand new paint. Base coat, clear coat. 22, you see something like that. 22, hit the, he put a lot, of, a lot of paint, a lot of clear coat, seven point, so it's, it's, it's gonna be very inconsistent because a human That's painted right. it. 8.03, 19 point. So on, on the top parts, he put extra. He laid extra on the, on the top. So that's a repaint. Can we, let's go see a, uh, yeah, something original. How about these? Oh, oh yeah. God, look at those paint. Look at those. 1.69. 2.45. 4.26. 2.21. Where they doubled it up? 3.78. Never done that before. So nothing is over five. It's barely, yeah. barely even four. It's only where it's doubled up that it's even four. Yeah. So this is, you know, this has been painted. That's been painted. I laid it on there. 6.21, 6. Yeah. 4.59. So the Harley stuff is very, very, very thin. So we should, this should be really clear. What about this one? That's Ooh. an old repaint there. This is, old, this is, a, this is old, an old repaint. Old repaint. Five. Yep. Five. 3.7. Yeah, that, 6. Bu 5. that bike was painted in 1951. 4.28. Yeah, so it's significantly five. So significantly higher. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it lot. really is, dude. That's fun tool. So if it's original, yeah. you're gonna see numbers in like less than two. Let me see this. I want to go up and try this. Uh, what? <laughs> What's this? Peacock blue, 1949 WR gas tanks. Two nine nine, three nine three. That's the highest reading I've seen. Two six one, two fifty four. Wow. Cool. So that that's an original tank. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Here, catch. <laughs> so we we should be able to figure out really easily if these are really because if they're if they're low numbers, you it's no one's duplicating that. So let's uh three point two five. Thirty two point five. Uh oh. Sixty point four forty six. Five eight seven thirty four. Let's try uh, these little uh, the side pan. Two. Oil tank, yeah, I Two thought that was six, original yeah. paint. Yeah. 2.6. Yeah, but how about this? I bet that's original paint. Maybe. 4.1, 2.0, 2. less than one. Thin. Yep. Two, original paint here, probably. 1.8. Wow. So it's, it's pretty clear. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even on the edge. <laughs> when I thought it was, well, I thought it was, well, I thought it was like, 2.5 2. or whatever, it was 25 or it was something. 3.5, it was 35. It was 35. At 35, this thing's been, the paint's thick. <laughs> and and they, they made the paint so thick so they can rub some off and. Yeah, and give it that give perfectly it that, smooth Give it look. that look. So my dreams of it being a $200,000 original paint bike are dead, but uh, I think it's worth what I paid for it. It's definitely worth what you paid, man. You know, part for part. It's worth that much, and yeah. the amount of enjoyment you're going to get from riding this bike, you should take it off the lift and go take it for a spin. Let's go take it for a spin. Now, if you notice that Matt really suspected, and I guess you could say he knew, that was not original paint. And the reason he knew that was not because he's seen so many bikes that have been repainted in his lifetime. The reason was he's seen so many originals in his lifetime. It's the same thing when, they, when, they, when they're when they training uh, bank tellers. They don't train them with the counterfeit. They train them with the genuine thing so they can spot a counterfeit because they know what the real one looks like. And that's why in life, we need to spend our time looking at truth and consuming truth and real things and not waste our time with the counterfeit and lies. And that brings us to one of my favorite Bible verses, Matthew 5.5. 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth.
feels good. Yeah, take, man. Take first spin. That's that knucklehead smile. Can I ride it? Yeah, man. Take it for a spin. Let it loose. How's it feel? Is that healthy? Oh God, it sounds good, man. Feels good. A little bit. That pops in really good. Let me see you guys up there.